Good afternoon and thanks for joining us on this Thursday. I'm Journey Taylor and here's a look at the stories we're following today. We start with new details on the manhunt for a mass shooter in Maine. More on the growing death toll and what survivors are saying about the attack. Plus, after three weeks, the U.S. House has finally found a speaker. Now, Congress must get to work on a list of legislative challenges ahead. And a master plan coming soon to Cersei in an effort to upgrade the city. Coming up, more on what to expect for the future of the community. But first, we have a look at weather. It's gloomy, it's warm, it's raining in some parts of the state. Meteorologist Nathan Scott, we are dealing with it all. Good afternoon, Journey. Yeah, it's unseasonably warm once again around central Arkansas. We've got that deck of cloud cover in place throughout most of the state. Temperatures, though, 78 right now in Little Rock. It's 69 in Mena, 73 for you folks in Camden. And I'm watching a ban of some light, steady rain right through parts of the Washita's extending into the River Valley down into southwest Arkansas. There are some pockets of heavier rain. We need this rain to make its way into central Arkansas. It's trying. Our chances of showers and thunderstorms will be going up as we go into the next several days. Also on the breezy side, look at those winds from the south about 10 to 20 miles per hour. Highs today, upper 70s to lower 80s. Your best chance of rain will be to the west of the metro, but even here around the metro, We've got a 30% chance of scattered showers. Like I said, the chance of rain will be going up and enjoy these warm temperatures because the coldest air of the season is on its way. I'll let you know when it arrives coming up. Residents in Lewiston, Maine and surrounding areas are being told to shelter in place as the manhunt continues for the gunman who killed 18 people and injured 13 others last night. Now the mass shootings unfolded at two locations, a restaurant and a bowling alley. Police have named a person of interest in the case and he is now considered armed and dangerous. CBS Bradley Blackburn has the latest. Law enforcement officials are asking for the public's help to track down the gunman responsible for the deadly mass shooting in Lewiston, Maine. If you see anything suspicious, please call us. We have an active shooter. We have multiple injuries. Police released these photos of a man walking into a bowling alley Wednesday night, pointing a weapon. There was a loud pop. This witness says he ran when the shots rang out. I just booked it um, down the lane and I slid basically into where the pins are and climbed up in the machine and was on top of the machines for about 10 minutes until the cops got there. Police said they responded to a second shooting location at a bar and restaurant less than four miles away. Police have identified 40-year-old Robert Card as the suspect in the pair of shootings. Mr. Card is considered armed and dangerous, and police advise that Maine people should not approach him under any circumstances. Card is in the Army Reserves, but according to the Maine Information and Analysis Center, he is not a trained firearms instructor with the reserves, as previously reported. He recently reported mental health issues and threatened to shoot up a National Guard base. He was committed to a facility for two weeks over the summer. Residents were told to stay locked in their homes while law enforcement officers search for the suspect. Schools are closed and people who live here are shaken. You and me and all these people standing here, we, we all got a fear for our lives today. Police also released a photo of the person of interest's vehicle that they recovered in a parking lot. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, Lewiston, Maine. Well, the FBI says it is assisting with the investigation, but Maine State Police is taking the lead. And more developing news, Little Rock Police are investigating a homicide at the 6500 block of Maperville Cutoff. Officers found a man dead on the scene after responding to a call of a shooting around 8 p.m. last night. Police haven't released details about the victim or suspect. We will continue to keep you updated as we learn more information. Now in Jefferson County, the Juvenile Justice Center is working to prevent overcrowding. The center has experienced an increased demand over the last few years. Sheriff Lafayette Woods believes it's due to an uptick in violent crime among the youth. He says mentorship programs that take them in, like Arkansas Camp Robinson, have become more important than ever, and not just because of the extra space they offer. So provides the structure and discipline, but also provides them with the educational foundation they need to be successful once they leave that program and enter back into society. 
Sheriff Woods is part of an organization in Pine Bluff that works with teens. They're trying to prevent future violence and lower the chance of repeat offenders, which can also help with the issue of bed space. The Hot Springs musician and her family are left with nothing after a fire earlier Tuesday morning destroyed their home. Musician Sarah Rodriguez, better known as Sarah Bear, was home when the fire started. Thankfully, no one was hurt, but their belongings are all ash. Sarah lost most of the instruments she uses in her performances. Now other musicians have stepped up to help, donating thousands to her GoFundMe. All she can say now is thank you. When I see that, it reminds me that there's that we're still have a that we're still okay. That the world's still okay. It hasn't gone to total crap. People still care about other people. The fire marshal is still investigating what caused that fire. A link to that GoFundMe is over on THV11.com. Well, big plans coming to Searcy as city leaders develop a 20 year master plan to revitalize the community. The plan aims to improve transportation infrastructure in the park system. It was all unveiled at a public event held at their community center. Developers are still in the design phase, but Searcy Mayor Matt Faulkner tells us they're still asking for feedback from residents. So we want to make sure that all of our facilities throughout the community um, are accessible and usable and will just enhance quality of life, make it a place where people love to live, love to work, and Searcy is a great place to raise a family. Currently, there is no price tag as the city continues receiving input from the community. They're also working on grants to cover some of the costs. In the more than three weeks that it took for the House of Representatives to find a new speaker, time has been running out for Congress to get critical pieces of legislation passed. Now Speaker Mike Johnson has to get to work in what has been shown to be a very divided chamber. Natalie Brand has more details from Capitol Hill. One day after unifying House Republicans and catapulting to Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson of Louisiana faces a long list of legislative challenges. We went through a lot to get here, uh, but, but we are ready to govern, and that will begin right away. One of the tasks, a looming government shutdown if lawmakers don't act by November 17th. You're going to see an aggressive schedule in the days and weeks ahead. You're going to see Congress working as hard as it's ever worked and we are going to deliver for the American people. Speaker Johnson is considered more conservative than his predecessor, which could help him win over hardliners opposed to any sort of temporary funding measure. We are honored uh, to have seen Speaker Johnson put out his plan for government funding and the words continuing resolution are not a part of that plan. Johnson wants to pass all 12 spending bills before the deadline, but he and other House GOP members acknowledge another stopgap measure may be needed. I do expect that my colleagues who are over here who are very reticent about a CR or a temporary funding mechanism to come a little more uh, towards the Main Street. House Republicans are also bitterly divided over whether to spend more money on the war in Ukraine. There's divided support in the Republican conference. I don't think we ought to bring a, a, a Ukraine bill that doesn't have a majority of Republican support. Johnson voted against a Ukraine funding bill, saying it needed more oversight. So you don't oppose funding aid to Ukraine? No, none of us do. I don't think anyone here, almost anyone, opposes it. But we'll be talking about how that's going to be done here in the coming days, and it's a top priority. Some House Republicans want a separate bill for Ukraine, one that's not bundled with aid for Israel. Natalie Brent, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Well, President Biden has asked Congress to pass one big bill worth more than $100 billion. It ties together aid for Ukraine and Israel, along with money for Taiwan and strengthening the southern border. Good news out of Little Rock, the Kroger on Rodney Parham that was hit by the March 31st tornado is getting ready to reopen. Doors will reopen on November 1st at 8 a.m. The Breckenridge area was one of the almost completely destroyed areas after the EF3 tornado hit central Arkansas. Other stores like Rock City Running has reopened in a new location and others like Little Rock Piano are back up and running as well. Well, today will be a there will be a town hall in Jasper to discuss the possible redesignation of the Buffalo National River. There are growing concerns that the river could be turned into a national park. Some argue that more tourists would have a negative impact on the river. 
The National Park Service says about 1.3 million people visited the Buffalo National River last year. Tonight's town hall meeting is at 6 p.m. at Jasper High School. And country music fans, get ready. Chris Stapleton continues his All-American Road show tour with a special stop at the Simmons Bank Arena in North Little Rock. His show features special guests Grace Potter and Alan Stone. The show is scheduled for August 2024. However, tickets go on sale this Friday, November 3rd. You can access the link to tickets on THV11.com. Well, coming up, a New York City charter school system is making waves with its mental health care practices. Find out how this academy is setting its students up for success. And we've got lots of clouds out there on our Thursday. You may need the AC today, but you'll be making the switch from the AC to the heat. I promise you next week as we've got some very cold temperatures in my extended forecast and also a good chance of rain. It's all coming up next.